Hey everybody, Jackalus Painting here with a new video. I've got the brand new Ragnar Black Main model and I'm really excited to get to work on this. This model is amazing. Ragnar is one of the OG Space Wolves characters. Super, super cool. I've got the model pre-primed and in a few sub-assemblies. got a backpack and the head separate just to make those easier to paint. He's got that big wolf pelt on his cape and I wanted to make sure to do it justice so I left the backpack off for easier access. First color of our Space Wolves armor is going to be dark gray blue. And I'm going to airbrush a pretty solid base coat on this model. In a lot of my Space Marine videos, or just airbrushing videos in general, you'll hear me say, do a semi-transparent base coat because we want that black primer to help tint those colors and also keep our shadows and deep recess detail nice and dark. I am doing that in our shadowed areas and in things like panel lines and armor details, but I'm making our base coat a little bit more solid and that's to set up a really icy Space Wolves blue armor. Our next color is going to be Faded Ultramarine and I'm going to be putting that in the airbrush with a little bit more flow improver so it's nice and smooth and I have a lot of control over the translucent nature of the paint so that I can build it up slowly again have lots of control over that and this is where i'm going to bring in the high angle spray i'm going to try really hard not to spray this blue on the model at anything lower than a 90 degree angle to make sure that our dark gray blue stays in the recessed details after that i'm going to mix in some light neutral gray so you can see i have this really really light pastel blue that icy baby blue that the space wolves are known for and I'm going to use this for some pop highlights. And whenever I do these new Primaris Marines, I like to focus on the center line of things. It really pops that armor, makes those colors really radical. So you can see that I'm focusing on the center line of the torso and neck armor down the middle center line of the arms and legs. And then I'm kind of playing with it and altering those rules based on the pose and the fact that he has a cape over top of the backs of his legs. So I'm shifting that highlight out to kind of the side of his leg rather than right down the middle of where his calf would be. And that's just to show that the actual center line of those legs is in shadow because of the cape. So I'm just creeping those highlights over ever so slightly, but everywhere else that is open to direct lighting, I'm just using the center line to pop those blues out. All right, next we're gonna work on his face. I've got it primed in some Steinal Res Red Brown. You've seen me use this before in previous videos. It's just a nice neutral terracotta brown primer. I'm gonna pull out the shadow flesh with plenty of flow improver, and I'm gonna lightly spray that base coat over the head. And whenever I paint faces like this, I wanna make sure that our dark base coat, in this case the primer, is gonna be showing through in the valleys and details of the face. So again, focusing the center line of the face and feathering that color out towards the sides will keep those shadows on the face nice and dark. And even the shallow areas, those valleys of the details, will have some good contrast. After that, I'm going to grab tan flesh. It's a nice brighter Caucasian color. Works really well with shadow flesh seen me use it before when I paint space marine faces. And again, I'm just going to lightly airbrush that on top of the head, maintaining a high angle and kind of aiming down the middle of the face and feathering it out towards the sides, trying to catch his ear there just a little bit. And now that's it. Super easy. It's only two steps. Uh, that's all it takes to paint a face with the airbrush. Really, really simple. So going to do a wash and some highlights on that later down the road, but that's really all we need to do. Next, I'm going to focus on his wolf pelt cape, and I'm going to pull out this color from the game Extra Opaque line. This is Vallejo paint. It's heavy brown. You've seen me use this before, but it has been quite a while since I've used any of the Extra Opaque paints, but this is a great color for a lightly tanned leather. Base coat that out, and I'm just going to do everything, the whole pelt and cape, the leather cape. I'm just going to base coat that out with two coats, make sure it's nice and solid. One of the great things about the extra opaque line is that it does base coat very easily and I'm painting with it very thin. Like you can thin these paints out quite a bit, but they're so pigment dense 
really only takes a couple of coats and it's nice and solid. After that, I'm gonna grab some olive flesh and with the olive flesh, I'm actually gonna base coat all of the fur. Now, Ragnar has this uh, multicolored wolf pelt, goes from black to brown to kind of an ivory color out in the tips of the fur, around the edges of that fur. And you could just base coat it dark brown and then build it up that way, go lighter towards the edges. But since we're using the airbrush, we're gonna do this really easy. So the trick here is to actually base coat the entire wolf pelt in this olive flesh, and it's gonna cover over that brown quite easily, even though it is a brighter sort of beige ivory color. I'm just gonna do a couple of coats of that, and then we're gonna airbrush down the middles, down the centers of the wolf pelt, so that we don't have to worry about overspray. We have this nice buffer zone of ivory paint with that olive flesh, so that we can have that really cool wolf pelt look that fades those colors out, but we're actually doing it in reverse. So I'm gonna grab this dark umber. It's gonna be our first color. It's a really nice dark chocolatey brown. And I'm gonna lightly airbrush that, starting in the middle of the wolf pelt areas and kind of fading that out towards the edges so that our olive flesh color is still on the tips around the edge of that wolf pelt. And the reason I chose to do this is so that I wouldn't have to worry about overspray because if I did black, then brown, and then the olive flesh around the edges, I'd have to mask it off and worry about ivory getting airbrushed onto our nice blue armor. But this way, all I have to do is really paint inside the lines. Like everybody's been coloring inside the lines since they were little kids, so this is really easy. And then the next step is even easier because I have a brown buffer zone for the black paint to do those little black stripes right down the middle of everything. That being said, this isn't free license to just go ham with the airbrush. Like you don't want to be blasting this brown paint because you will get overspray. Like if you really back that needle out and open up that spray pattern, um, you will get brown uh, overspray and we don't want that. And even when I was doing this, on the back of the wolf head, I did get a little bit of brown overspray on the neck guard, but that's okay because his head is gonna be in there. He's got this huge mane of hair. So after a wash, after the highlights, that brown is basically gonna disappear because it's so thin, it's so transparent, we're not gonna worry about it. It's even gonna look like a shadow once his hair is in the way, so it works out. But still, be very careful, take your time. I think it took me maybe two minutes, two or three minutes to airbrush this brown just because I was being extra careful, taking my time, checking my angles to make sure that the airflow was not gonna carry paint off of the edge onto our blue armor. Just turning the model around. Once that's done, I'm gonna grab some black paint. I think in this case, I just grabbed black primer again because it airbrushes really good. And I'm just gonna do a little black stripe down the center of these wolf pelt areas. So I guess this would be like the back of the wolf down the spine. Just gonna do a little black stripe there, kind of on the top of the head, maybe where it started, and then along the shoulder of the leg areas, just right down the middle. And then we have that really nice uh, black, brown, white type color, that blonde color right at the tips. And we didn't have to worry about any overspray. And our leather is already base coated, it is so easy. And it may look like a really complicated model with this big wolf pelt and cape. And you know, it seems intimidating, but sometimes you just gotta think outside the box. So in this case, we were actually doing our airbrushing stuff in reverse and it worked out great. And so now we have some really great icy blue Space Wolf armor, and we've got this beautifully airbrushed wolf pelt. And we still got a lot of detail work to do on it, but we got this model set up and ready to go. I'm really liking where it's going. Make sure to catch me next time for part two, where we get into doing more colors and then washes.